Good evening. Let's start with what mortars are actually for. Mortar ought to serve at least three purposes. It ought to form a soft but gradually hardening bed to receive the various building materials so that these shall obtain a uniform bearing notwithstanding the irregularity of their surfaces. In the second place it ought to prevent the passage of wind and rain through the joint of the walling. And lastly it ought to uh, have adhesive and cohesive strength enough to bind the component parts of the wall and of the mortar into one solid mass. Mortar strength is often greatly overemphasized to the detriment of other essential mortar properties such as workability, water retentivity and bond strength and these are all related. Uh, and those builders who strive for high or maximum mortar strength usually obtain inferior mortar for normal above ground masonry construction. We might add that a mortar ought to possess appropriate functional behaviour, offering efficient capillarity in the drying of traditional fabric and keeping it dry, as well as offering potential sacrificial behaviour and a generally compatible compressive strength. Modern natural hydraulic lime mortars generally do not exhibit these properties. Earth lime and hot mixed or air, air or feebly hydraulic lime mortars meet all of the above and the below criteria and were the preferred mortars of the building crafts historically and for so long as it was that the crafts designed the mortars. Their autonomy in this regard was eroded from the later 19th century onwards. Workability was the standard historically and free lime is the key element in all essential mortar properties. The higher its proportion the better these will be. This, these understandings are still reflected in the ASTMS guidance. Workability is the most important property of plastic mortar. Workable mortars can be spread easily with the trowel into the separations and crevices of the masonry unit. Workable mortar also supports the weight of the masonry units when placed and facilitates alignment. It adheres to vertical masonry surfaces and readily extrudes from the mortar joints when the mason applies pressure to bring the unit into alignment. Workability is a combination of several properties including plasticity, consistency, cohesion and adhesion which have defied exact laboratory measurement. The mason can best assess workability by observing the response of the mortar to the trowel. Good workability is essential for maximum bond with masonry units. Traditional mortar proportions. Earth lime at least 5 to 10 percent quick lime addition sometimes 1 to 3 more typically one slate lime to five aggregate, which transforms the workability and properties of, of an earth mortar. Pure and feebly hydraulic limes, one part quick lime to two or three parts aggregate, giving one to one, one to two, or two to three slate lime aggregate proportion, or richer in lime than this. Three aggregate considered the most that one quick lime could take without compromising workability and performance. With powdered quicklime, one to four will work, as all is binder. Moderately to eminently hydraulic lime, one part quicklime to two parts aggregate, or one to one, depending upon hydraulicity. The more hydraulic, the less expansion upon slaking, as only the free lime can slake. It is essential as a general principle that traditional mortar proportions are respected. Uh, sorry, uh, in, in modern conservation practice. These were arrived at during thousands of years of craft practice and offer optimal workability and functional performance. I should also say it's essential that these general proportions are observed in scientific analysis or scientific investigation of the properties of mortars, which they simply have not been over recent decades. Instead, looking at one to three, a modern binder to uh, aggregate proportion. Traditional mortars and their primary uses, I want to cover these as I go through, but earth mortars, clay bearing subsoil, loam, improved or otherwise with sand or other aggregate and well tempered, typically 12% clay, high volume of silt and of generally fine texture, uh, used for masonry construction, plastering, daubing and for floors with, with additives. Uh, earth lime mortars, typically 10% lime, uh, sometimes more to a clay and silt bearing subsoil as above, usually added in the form of quicklime and for all the same purposes as above.
Um, York House Moulton, this is a, a, a high status building constructed using earth lime mortars in every phase of its uh, evolution. Uh, finished with uh, a, a daub backing coat topped with a uh, very lime rich haired pointing mortar uh, of pure lime typically and similarly outside uh, on the exterior pointing. Uh, some of the mortars from within York House, some of the plaster mortars and finish coats uh, Earth, lime and earth, earth and earth lime mortars also within the house, uh, all bedding oolitic limestone. Uh, York House interior lime content variable according to purpose, uh, as you can see. Earth lime plaster analysis, uh, an analysis of one of those from within York House, which was one quick lime to three clay bearing subsoil, loam with clay proportion reduced as necessary by the addition of sand, limestone or other aggregates. And of course, this is Roman building technology still being applied. The same system universally applied to timber frame buildings is Tong Hall, a much neglected and fire damaged structure in, in Lancashire. A pond farmhouse in, in Cram, New York, 1580, earth lime bedding mortars, haired pure lime pointing mortars, earth lime plasters with hay added. And a very recent project uh, done by myself and Maria Calderon, uh, <clears throat> the former Sun Inn in Billsdale, North Yorkshire, 15th, 16th and 17th century stoned crock, uh, like for like repair with earth lime and, and pure lime internal repointing and, and plastering uh, and pure lime finish coats and finally hot lime washing throughout uh, using a locally burned oolitic limestone uh, quick lime, uh, uncannily very similar uh, in every way to that which was used originally. In France, earth lime building technology very similar to in, in uh, the UK, very similar to everywhere really. Uh, and in France carried on longer historically than it did typically in Britain because we had enclosure. Enclosure was the main obstacle to the continuation of earth lime building. Uh, in Valencia, a 17th century merchant's house, earth lime bedding, hot mix lime pointing, hot mix mass concrete, tapia valenciana, uh, in the gate of the town defences, enduring Roman practice in a, in a city founded by the Romans. Uh, in, in China, the realisation that cement mortars were doing terrible damage uh, has led to the revival of hot mix lime pointing over earth lime built fabric on the Great Wall of China. Traditionally, earth lime mortars in China, 30% air lime, 70% loam overlaid with pure lime pointing mortars. Ellaburn, North Yorkshire, deep packing of an earth lime built church uh, with earth lime mortars, final finish pointing with hot mixed lime mortars. And of course, earth lime mortars common throughout Canada and North America, in this case in Alberta, brought by Ukrainian settlers for use in combination with timber frame and log uh, construction uh, and a recent hot lime washing and repair, repair and hot lime washing of a Jesuit mission church uh, at Fort McMurray. Some information, very little research has been done into the actual properties of earth lime mortars, but this is some, I will leave you to look at those in your own time. Uh, the ubiquity of hot mixing demonstrated very clearly by a recent analysis of the Scottish Lime Centre Trust Mortars database by Anna Schmidt. Uh, the blue is hot mixed and typically uh, pure or feebly hydraulic lime mortars. Hot mixed air or feebly hydraulic lime mortars, uh, general building with stone and brick repointing, plastering, timber frame uh, works, external renders, uh, feebly hydraulic lime used in waterworks uh, early on, um, usually with pots of land, but certainly not always, uh, and, and in roofing. Uh, this hot mixing on Coal Island, using seawater actually to slake, as we believe the Royal Engineers did when they built the buildings. Uh, Coal Island, National Historic Site again on Vancouver Island, the Royal Navy Pacific Fleet Magazine, uh, the Marine Guard House, built 1861, uh, with hot mix lime mortars, uh, pure lime mortars, a uh, mass one to six concrete and zinc clad timber raising uh, in 1905. Uh, 
and recent uh, refurbishment, repair, conservation works within that building, uh, hot mix lime plastering with lime putty finish coats uh, as traditionally. Um, and some recent works, other recent hot mix works in Canada, the Memorial Library done by Sean Tebow, who, who you will see or have seen already, uh, Kingston, Ontario by Matt McCartney, uh, and a before and after of a project done during lockdown uh, by Stephen Mason in, in Toronto. So putty lime was slaked with minimum volumes of water before further dilution when the slake was complete, laid down, sieved or screened. Otherwise, mixed to a bread dough-like consistency and much like a hot mix lime mortar if used promptly. Uh, and lime putty slate that way, also very much like a hot mix lime mortar in character, mouldable, cohesive, adhesive, and without free water. Uh, used on its own as a mortar or for gauge brickwork and very fine stone ashlar, fine plaster finish coats, tuck pointing, very rarely as a binder before the 20th century, when it was gauged with cement or gypsum to compensate for long-standing perceived weakness in binding properties. Uh, lime and hair, very common for roofing applications, laid down typically 7 to 14 days uh, below Montrose in, in Scotland uh, and, and gauge brickwork in London. And a whole building built with lime pussy mortars here in Yorkshire, uh, Oldby Park, and in 1726, but Saline County Courthouse in Nebraska in 1927 with the same promptly used uh, lime putty mortars. Uh, an analysis of a 400 year old uh, haired lime mortar over earth built fabric uh, in Thornton Dale, two parts lime, one part limestone dust, hot mixed, um, and to the right, repointing completed the week before Christmas in 2018. Uh, and an experiment with, again, locally bur burned, non-hydraulic oolitic limestone, burned in a, in a small-scale kiln by myself, slaked by immersion to a dry hydrate, fresh from the kiln, mixed immediately to a mortar with hair added and pointed into a minimally pre rutted wall while still hot. Minimal initial shrinkage, leather hard 12 hours later, dressed back, and the face carbonated within a, a week. Hot mixed or sand slaked, and they are different procedures, moderately or eminently hydraulic lime mortars, either artificial, um, using pots lands, or NHL, which was typically blue lias in England and Wales, which had a relatively high free lime content. Uh, used primarily for underground and underwater works, docks, quays, sea walls, although pots hot hotmix lime mortars were generally preferred. I would say that the only preferred use of NHL was for concrete footings and floors, which begs many questions about our current practice. Some above con ground construction in the later 19th century and early 20th century, um, but this was quickly realised to be a mistake, as is evident from the historic uh, building manuals of the period. Uh, Asturias and other places, it was uh, common mortars were gauged with NHL. Um, uh, but these, all of these were displaced by cement or cement lime mortars for general use quite quickly and by Portland cement for concrete. Uh, routine use for general conservation work and above ground since the 1990s in the UK, usually with NHL 3.5 or 5 and mixed at 1 to 3. Natural cement, waterworks, cast mouldings, fortifications and again used commonly as a gauge uh, for uh, common mortars in the USA, uh, often unsuccessful when used upon traditional fa fabric, uh, some mass concrete construction, and of course cement lime mortars, not strictly a traditional mortar but one that is trying to imitate the properties of a traditional mortar within the context of modern building practice and technology. Um, there had already been the craft edition of around a 15th part to common airline mortars, uh, which were hot mixed or otherwise, but we, we, we know the typical proportions. Uh, the Canadian version, one to two and a half to eight, has 70% free lime, which is much more than most commonly available, or indeed any commonly available NHLs. Um, and here, just for interest, here the, the uh, kiln, and the only surviving natural cement kiln in the UK for Yorkshire, Atkinson Cement, natural cement from Sands End, which was considered the best in the UK. 
um, cement lime mortars uh, were in Nebraska uh, on one of the most sensational buildings in the world. Uh, excellent functional performance, no damage, dampness or decay. Uh, the use of Potsdamic lime mortars on uh, on the North York Moors by volunteers, people who never worked with lime before, who mix and apply these mortars under my uh, my supervision, one would say, um, eminently workable uh, and not much more than feebly hydraulic. Calcined ironstone waste, the only aggregate. So a comparison between feebly hydraulic limes as used uh, historically in the UK, although not as frequently as some people think, uh, and of course the modern standard for NHLs, showing quite clearly that these are very different materials. Um, recent research, uh, carried out by Cristiano uh, Figueredo, important, hugely important research into the actual properties of NHLs and long overdue, one has to say, but demonstrating what was always known historically, that these materials vary from one brand to another, and more than that, which this research couldn't demonstrate, obviously, vary within the same brand from batch to batch, perennially and inherently. Uh, this was one of the primary reasons they were so distrusted in the past and why their use was generally rejected by stonemasons. But of course, we've had 20 years of using these materials in the UK, uh, 20 years and a little bit more, and we're able to observe the long-term consequences of that use. So here we have uh, a, um, a very durable Pennine sandstone decaying with salt activity whilst the joint itself remains perfectly intact. This work done with an NHL 3.5 in the late 90s. A rebuilt um, porch of magnesium limestone. Uh, and again, the stone is having to manage, this, manage the salts and the moisture in this, uh, in this building, not the mortars. Uh, similarly here, we have NHL 3.5 uh, brickwork, pointed brickwork with salts in the bricks, not in the mortar. Um, on the right, however, a hot mixed line, airline mortar, salts captured by the mortars below left. Um, the sandstone was, had previously been eroded by Portland cement pointing and salt activity. Six years on, the salts have dispersed and the mortars remain sound. Uh, a common uh, effect of using NHLs is their tendency to shrink over time as the silica set continues to develop. And here we have uh, NHL mortars put in in the late 1990s, which have shrunk away from the stonework, allowing water in uh, on a grand scale in many cases. We also have uh, sacrificial behavior being performed by the sandstones where there are salts in the equation. To the right, a repointed panel with hot mixed airline mortars, uh, and that fabric is now dry. Uh, here, uh, 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 an earth-built, clay-built structure in Scotland, in the wettest, one of the wettest parts of Scotland, um, pointed some years before this photo was taken, not many, a couple of years, with NHL 5, uh, subsequently repointed with a hot-mixed airline mortar. The photo at right two weeks after this pointing and actually two hours after 24 hours worth of rain had ceased. Another example and indicating the, the, the hazards of adding air in trainers into NHLs to try and give some semblance of workability to these materials, uh, which stopped them working at all. Uh, so four years after repointing, this brickwork was perennially saturated. It had been since within a month of placement. Uh, um, and you can see the consequence of A, removing that and exposing the original hot mix mortars, the brick dry, the bricks dried overnight, or indeed pointing with a hot mix line mortar compatible and like for like with that of construction. Gauged work, I was shocked by this when I revisited this site. Four sharp sand, one bath limestone dust, one Horton Brown limestone dust, one lime putty, one St. Astier two. No sacrificial behavior in the mortars, but continued erosion of salt uh, burden stonework and the building as a whole wetter than it ever was when we, when we started on that job and it had previously been pointed with a cement lime mortar. Uh, some comparisons here, cement uh, pointing over an earth lime built limestone structure at left, uh, 
NHL pointing uh, on a brick structure, again built with hot mix lime mortars, uh, and, and to the right, an earth lime built fabric repointed with a hot mixed air lime mortar. Here, a stone of exactly the same geology, in fact, but the left, a grade one listed building, Mask Hall, pointed recently with NHL, perennially wet, uh, to the right, uh, a building of same geology, but pointed with a hot mixed airline mortar, perennially dry. Uh, similar effects on this earth lime built uh, farmstead in North Yorkshire, one year on, the buildings look dry. I have to be honest, I didn't perceive them as being particularly wet. We have a problem. We have, we have forgotten what dry buildings look like. Elsewhere in Wayne County Courthouse in, in Nebraska, built using hot mixed airline mortars over just five months in 1899, from August to December of that year, um, illustrating the immediate load bearing capacity as well as the frost resilience uh, of hot mixes, um, early frost res resilience, and repointed just recently with like for like hot mixed lime mortars with hematite uh, pigmentation as originally. Alston, North Yorkshire, repointed with hot mixed air limes during midwinter. Um, one year before, the temperatures were dropping to minus 15 centigrade overnight during this work, but we used no protection. We were working on a sunny elevation, etc. Overcoat is being applied here. Uh, a general treatment to a, 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 an important timber frame in York, hot mixed brickwork, infill panels, hot mixed plastering, hot lime washes over the whole frame preserving dryness in the timbers as well as in the general fabric. So, to sum up, the typical compressive strength of an airline mortar after three months can vary between 0.7 and 1.3 MPA, but growing evidence that up to 2 MPA with a hot mixed airline mortar uh, is possible, whether used hot or cold, and sometimes more than this, depending on aggregate choices. Earth lime and hot mixed or other air lime mortars made to historic lime aggregate proportions and slate to traditional prescriptions are economic and efficient to produce. They offer mortars of eminent workability, encouraging good and efficient workmanship. They offer optimal water retentivity and excellent bond strength, as well as consistent extent of bond. They demand much less aftercare than other forms of lime. They are tenacious. They offer appropriate durability so long as traditional building details are respected and maintained. Uh, the addition of small or even large volumes of pots of land enhances its strength, durability and speed of set without compromising workability or other essential characteristics. They offer high effective porosity, keeping building fabric dry and thermally efficient and reducing the need for repair or replacement of building elements as well as for frequent repointing. In pursuit of carbon reduction, earth lime and lime rich hot mixed lime mortars are not only the most appropriate like for like and compatible mortars for the conservation and repair of traditional buildings, but for sustainable mainstream new build as well. Thank you.